driven to left field and deep. Going back Cespedes. He's on the track. He's at the wall. See ya. A home run for Judge. And the Yankees take a one nothing lead. My boy, Judge! Now we're starting off <clears throat> Dong City, July 20th edition. We have baseball this weekend. We are excited. We are happy. Aaron Judge is getting it off. <clears throat> My throat is all fucked up. And we had Dongs this weekend. As you can see, we got a couple special guests. Matt Whalen, Sean Rosori, AL NL West preview, Vince Merck and Daddy, Roberto Martinez in the background. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Good. Excellent. How's it going, boys? Doing good. Staying nice. inside, staying cool. Good. Perfect. I am so glad you took care of the names there, Henry. I was really stressing about that. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Donk City. We've got Matt and Sean here, uh, our all-California edition. But we are going to discuss the Western Divisions here, preview for the season, the season right around the corner. We are three days away from Henry and I just making fun of everyone who didn't think there'd be baseball and uh, we, we've got some special guests here. So let's get right into it. Uh, Sean and Matt, in case you haven't been watching, we're gonna preview both Western divisions since you guys are playing each other this year. And we're gonna start from worst to first. Um, we've got Rob Martinez in the background. Rob's gonna be handling our uh, special effects today, if you will, and we'll chime in from time to time. So here we are, Dong City. Rob, why don't you uh, start us off here with our first team. We're gonna go through each team. And, uh, and and talk about this. So here we go. It's the Seattle Mariners that are the worst of the worst um, here, to, here to talk about it. So, Matt, why don't we start with you? Uh, as an Angels fan, Mariners are probably a little, you know, not a threat, but they're obviously in your division, maybe a little closer to how the Angels performed last year. What are your feelings on the Mariners in the 60-game season in 2020? Uh, I don't have much feelings on that. Do you think there's any they're outside there? Their, their GM likes to trade off everybody. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They're going to be the bottom of the barrel for sure. I think so for sure. Last to his place, credit, he didn't. To his credit, he didn't make any trades yet. Not yet. Yeah, I think he's confused by the short season. But I say, I mean, I'm looking at their schedule right here off the bat. They've got the Astros for four. That's a brutal start. Uh, and then the Angels and A's, who, and then Angels again. So it doesn't get really any sort of easy until maybe mid-August. And even then, you've got the Dodgers and Astros right in the middle of the month. So yeah, I don't like their. I don't like you know my thought process throughout the first two divisions when we discuss them is that if you're a bad team, you need a, an easy start to the schedule and get some confidence going and get the wheels turning. The Mariners don't have that. I don't have to spend much time discussing it. I don't think they've got a shot. Sean, do you feel any differently? I know this isn't your division, but you will uh, beat up on them a few times this year. What are your thoughts on Seattle? Um, I think what everyone else thinks. They're lacking in talent and lacking in, a, in motivation to win from the GM. Um, there's just lacking in fan support, right? There's not much going on there with Seattle. Yeah, yeah not, not too much at all. Henry, do you have any <laughs> other uh, any other input here before we move on? I, I think they suck. I think their payroll sucks. Their GM sucks. They have some talent. They had a lot of subtractions. If they win 20 games, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I'm with you. By the way, Renee has entered to remind you that Puerto Rico is not getting baseball. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so we've got that right off the bat here. And, um, yeah, I mean, Rob, we can, we can move forward. I don't want to make the same mistakes we've made the last two weeks by giving bad teams too much time. Yeah. So – We'll move on to the Padres. So entering the NL here, uh, Padres came in last last year, obviously, but they are an up-and-coming team. I mean, uh, I've seen them compared to kind of the White Sox rebuild. I don't personally like them as much as I like the way the White Sox are being built. Uh, and I also don't like that they're in the NL West competing with teams like the Dodgers when – the AL Central, in my mind, is a little more winnable even in a 60-game season. So that's my main put input on the Padres. I don't think they're quite there yet. I think they've still got some prospects who need to prove themselves and also come up to make this a better team. Uh, but they can be a pain-in-the-ass type team. You know, not going to win the division, but they can definitely uh, ruffle some feathers along the way. Yep. Schedule, to me, I, I think the Mariners wish they had this sort of start to the year, <laughs> and, and they don't. Uh, Diamondbacks, Giants, Rockies, that's not scaring anyone right off, you know, right to begin the season. That's my input. Henry, what do you think? I think that team has a lot of uh, talent. 
it's just it's not there yet. Give him a couple more years. <clears throat> I want to see Tatis grow a little bit more. I think it's going to be a season for him to just go off. Uh, but I, I don't see them competing in this division. Sean, this is your division. This is your first uh, competition here, if you will. What, uh, as a Dodgers fan, first talk to us about 2020, but also are you worried about this team down the line knowing what you know about their farm system and their young guys? Well, the, the, the Padres used to be a team that would give the Dodgers fits, even in years when they weren't very good and the Dodgers were good. But those days, you know, the Dodgers have been crushing them the last seven years. So – but I do agree with Henry that they have potential. I like them in a few years. You know, Tatis is going to be great, I think. They have some young arms, and they have a core that they can build around. But definitely not this year. I don't know about next year. 2023, 2024, uh, playoff contender. Not this year, though. Yeah, I think that's fair. They're like a salad without any sort of dressing or like anything <laughs> built on it. Like they're just the lettuce right now for me. Uh, and Matt, that's a perfect segue into your opinion as a food guy. What, uh, what, what do you, uh, what are your thoughts on the Padres? I mean, they will. I think they'll be dangerous in like a few years. I honestly think that I wouldn't compare their rebuild to um, White Sox, like like people have said. Um, plus, because they've been rebuilding for what ten years now. <laughs> yeah, God hasn't damn. gone great. <laughs> like, like, what will it take to actually like get some product on the field and fucking get them to get this going? Yeah, they can never seem to to finish off the rebuild and have a uh, sustainable contender. Brian Horsewood in the chat gives them a zero and several repeating zero decimals, point one percent chance of winning the division. So, uh, hey, Cole, our hey. <laughs> our audience is is just as pessimistic as we are about the Padres this year. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree with all you guys. I think there's a there's a future there. It's just not yet. Uh, yeah. Schedule doesn't mean too much about me. End of the year, kind of boring too. Mariners, Angels, Giants. I don't personally know how many of those games will be relevant, so I can't even pretend like they might play spoiler to anyone. So that's it. <laughs> Those are our last place teams, Rob. We I mean, honestly, going. though, anybody can play a spoiler in the fucking in the sixty game season down yeah. to the last week. <laughs> yeah, for sure. My only point is that the opposition needs to be in playoff contention for you to spoil them. And, oh, and no, I, don't I know. totally agree with you on that. I totally agree. Yeah. With you on that. Well, I was well, gonna. I was gonna mention that the only obstacle to the Dodgers this year is the short schedule because you know they've won seven divisions in a row. But how many times were they? in command after 60 games you know several times they were not even in first at that not, point. not many yeah you're right so, you know, point. you're absolutely right it's the weird shit defense right like the, the 60 game season is fundamentally the only thing that can stand in the dodgers way of running away with this division yeah, I, I, think, I agree i think a huge advantage for the dodgers is the dh though they're the one team that can throw a you know near all-star out there at the dh mm -hmm. spot. yeah and i think and that's a big advantage I agree. We're going to get to their lineup for sure. And speaking yeah. of good lineups, speaking of California, Matt, we're back in your territory here. This is your Angels. Uh, I know Henry and I have some extra things to talk about the Angels here. But, Matt, what do you what do you think of your team's prospects this year? Are you a playoff contender? Are you a wild card contender at the very least? Or is this another year? I think we no wild card for sure. I know the lineup can definitely do it. The only thing I'm worried about is pitching, like always, is fucking pitching. Yeah. What, you know, what do you think about your acquisitions with Dylan Bundy? And uh, I feel like there's been a, a couple other very generic Tejeron. guys you acquired. Yeah, we got Julio Tejeron. Right. And uh, I think uh, well, Bundy right now, even starting of original spring training, he was fucking killing it. And he's killing it right now, too, in all the sim games. So I, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with him right now, but he's fucking – he's doing really good. Yeah, it's – Comment section, by the way, is uh, very big on Angels lineup and not pitching. Well, you so. wouldn't be. We have a fucking a, a, a three piece, a fucking three piece lineup of Otani, Trout, and Rendon. Oh, Who's man. not excited about that? Yeah, it, it's perfectly <laughs> fair, Sean. You're uh, the other end of this this state rivalry, if uh, you will. Yeah, I'm doing this trash. Where, now, where, as, are, where are you with the Angels? Now, as, as a Dodger fan from New York, uh, I've never had any real disdain for the Angels. And, you know, they beat the Giants in 2 and I loved that. That was great. So I don't have anything against the Angels. I don't find their fan base particularly, 
you know, they're not the Philadelphia Eagles fan base. They seem pretty laid back California. I have no problem with the Angels, and I actually root for them in that division. I like, Henry, that this is like – it's basically the same thing as the Yankees and Mets, but mm -hmm. with like a shot at being Californian on top of it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't – I honestly don't – I sometimes don't even understand the whole – Dodgers Angels rivalry like other than being in like the same local like town or not even in the same town like there's no really any rivalry there I don't see much of a rivalry there I, I compare it to the Giants and the Jets they rarely play each other um you know they just happen to be in the same geographical location exactly. but I don't see they haven't you know they haven't had any playoff they never they've never met in the playoffs of the World Series yeah. so there's yeah. really no rivalry there other than it's all about sharing the market. yeah yeah I mean, yeah, I wouldn't it, mind a fucking a freeway World Series one day. Not that would be great. That, that would be great. awesome. I it, hey, if it's like the New York one, the Dodgers are going to win. I hate to break it to you. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can they win a World Series though? Who would be? Who would be? Who would be the Angels, <laughs> Benny Ibayani? <laughs> hey, the Cubs won a World Series, right? <laughs> it's uh, and I after trading an MVP. If the Cubs can win, any team can win. Yeah. This is the sort of rowdiness I'm looking for out of our uh, out of our guest go. competitors here. Henry, do you have any thoughts, any feelings on the Angels this year? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing everyone says. The lineup is stacked. You know, one through five, Lestella, Trout, Rendon, Otani, Pujols. David know. Fletcher. Yeah. What's, where's Fletcher hitting? Uh, isn't he projected to be on the bench? No, he'll be starting a lot. Okay. Well, fucking Madden loves him, dude. He'll it's be on the field as much batting as eighth, there. You know, Goodwin is seventh, which he had a nice year last year. I just, I, I like that lineup. I don't like their pitching whatsoever. I think it's a, a bunch of question marks. You don't know what you're going to get from Otani. There's Andrew a lot of Heaney. potential there, but there's it's not proven yet. I mean, Andrew Heaney, Dylan Bunny, these they, these are guys that come in with question marks, you know. No, exactly. I, I don't it see is. anyone with an ERA under, under four in that, in that um, rotation. In a short season, they could just, you know, maybe they could mash their way to the playoffs. That's a really good lineup that's going to score a lot of runs. It's possible, but in, that, in this division, it's going to be rough. Yeah, it's, it's really going to be, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, Henry. I had made the post kind of cryptically last night with no context that uh, the excuse that you can mash to the playoffs this season sounds good in theory, but now in Major, major League Baseball, you've got about 15 or 16 teams that have offenses like that. So yeah, to me – even in a True. short season, you need you need some pitching. And the Angels haven't demonstrated that they have that yet. I personally think they have a few good bullpen arms that I kind of liked. And if they can stay healthy, they can put something together. I'm probably a little bit bigger on Dylan Bundy than a lot of other people. I think he's got the raw stuff to be successful. And I don't trust the Orioles to develop pitchers anymore than the Angels. So maybe they can find uh, something. How many them. years have we waited for Dylan Bundy to actually As, as many as any other Orioles prospect. <laughs> <which> <laughs> yeah, in exactly. years. yeah they, never, they never pan out. Yeah. Um, that said, so I mean, the Angels are in that boat to me, right? They've got a good lineup. We know they can put up runs. My problem is that you look at these Western teams. Oakland has a good lineup and good pitching. San Diego has good pitching at the very least. The Mariners suck. <laughs> the Astros have good <laughs> pitching and good hitting. The Dodgers have good pitching and good hitting. Texas has good hitting. Um, who am I missing? Here? Colorado has good hitting. You look at these divisions, and there's a lot of good lineups in the West. Yeah. And we know the NL West is all about pitcher parks. AOS, not so much. But I don't know that the Angels having this great lineup really does anything differently to put them a, a, as a leg up against any other teams in the West. And that's my concern with them, is they really need the pitching to come through if they want a shot, even at a wild card in my mind. Uh, and there's no guarantee that's going to happen. So to me, it's like the Angels, yeah, they've got promise. They got Rendon. I love that. That's a great move for that lineup, uh, protecting Trout and whatnot. I just don't know what separates them from the other eight teams that have good offenses and don't have pitching. You know what There's I'm going to enjoy? I'm going to enjoy one reliever coming in by the name of Ty Buttray, getting outs and people being embarrassed by that. I love Buttray. Because <laughs> that's got to be the dude. best reliever we, name. Pretty, we also got Ryan Butcher, too, from the A's in the offseason, too. He's a, pretty, he's a pretty good stellar left-hander. He can come in and fucking shut people down. It's going to be interesting, but, yeah, that's where we're at with them. Alan asked about the uh, about Albert Pujols. I we had had this argument actually. I don't know if anyone else was involved that's in this 
in this conversation right now, but we had that argument about that. Uh, you remember that post about the easiest feat out of like, there was like four different feats for people to reach this year in a short season pools was yeah. one of them. Uh, yeah. This long winded argument about how I don't think he can hit however many home runs it was. Anyway, Long-winded way of saying I'm not big on Pujols this year. I, I think his best years are behind him. I don't see him staying healthy. Um, so I'm not a big Pujols guy, but they do have a good lineup. And he says he the, feels like he's 25 again, though. Yeah, <laughs> they all say that too. Yeah, it's the same thing as I have a new workout regimen. I feel great. I'm doing same, like it's, 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 same, like, it's the best feel. I've, it's the best I've felt my whole life. <laughs> yeah, how many I've times have we heard that? Weight. Right, like uh, I, that happens. I mean, the Yankees and Angels basically have the same pitching staff, except minus the drugs that they give out. Uh, but the the Yankees, it's been the same thing every year. These guys lose twenty or thirty pounds, and and that's it. <laughs> it's, it doesn't really yeah, correlate doesn't to anything. They get hurt anyway. So. When he starts running again, he'll realize, oh shit, my plantar fasciitis hurts. Yeah, hey, my knee uh, is horrible. So I, I don't know how much stock I put into it, but good for Pujols. I mean, he's one of the all-time greats. I hope he does well. I just don't see any reason to think he will. Um, but on a side note, one of, the, one of the promising things about the Angels, their lineup or their pitching, however you would look at it, is, uh, is our man Otani over here, a Dong City favorite. Henry and I love talking about him. Um, you are not living in the twilight zone. We want to highlight Shoyan Otani, good friend of the show, Eddie Morales, um sent us these books and eddie is always talking about dong city how much he loves the show we really appreciate it he he's a diehard angels fan too and i love eddie, it eddie's a very good angels fan and yeah, his yep. friend not only did he send us his book but his friend jay paris uh wrote the book yep. and had it inscribed for us personally so oh that's fucking awesome that was, that was pretty cool eddie yes. thank you brother we appreciate it very cool. So two things about that. One is always feel free to send free things to Dong City hosts. Absolutely. We're all about that. Uh, and the other is we pledge Angels fans and to Eddie, we will have an Otani show uh, where we talk about the book and we try and have Jay on as a guest. We're going to try and arrange that down the road so we can have a full conversation. I, I say what I say about Otani. He is a fascinating baseball player. Uh, I, just I, I was very happy. I was very happy when the Angels got Otani. Here, here's because the best part. Here's the best part of this gift that Eddie didn't know. It was like the troll of all trolls, and he had no idea. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyone who's been in the group long enough knows that we had a hard on for Otani, and we wanted him. And the minute the Angels got him, Vince just went and found every possible negative thing <laughs> in the universe <laughs> about <Apologic>. Otani. <laughs> yeah, about and Otani. Vince, Vince has just been posting all types of negative shit, you know, fucking with him, and then boom. Here comes Eddie with this wonderful book about Shohei Otani. And the best part about <laughs> it was the perfect oh, troll job. irony job. at its finest. Yeah, it was the perfect the troll job. The best part about it is Eddie didn't give us any warning. He just said he was sending us something in the mail. So I opened yeah. this and I see oh, it. Oh, really? Like, didn't even like say no, it was a book I didn't anything? know it was a book. I didn't know it was about Otani. I didn't even know it was about the Angels. And I open it in my, you know, I open it from my mailbox and I look at it and I'm like, has Eddie been in the group since like 2016? <laughs> because I'm like, how does he know that I just despised <laughs> Otani all, all, since he's been in the majors? No, um, Eddie was one of the first Angel fans that I added to the group. Oh, good. All right, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know where he, where he came from. So it, it was uh, great. It was a good gift, Ed, Eddie. Thank you again, brother. Yes, thank you. Very nice of you. Some of it tongue in cheek with Otani. Other of it is very legitimate. It's a, uh, it's a deep seated hatred. That said, as someone who loves baseball and, and a historian of baseball, I absolutely would welcome talking to Jay about Otani. And there's no better person probably on earth who can talk about him. So we're excited to try and get that arranged. Um, that is our like, shout out to the Angels. Like Vince said, feel free to send gifts, though. We, we don't say no. To yeah, gifts. you guys want to try us with anything else? You have, like, cool DVDs you want us to watch or like, other send, books? Send some gifts to the lab, too, guys. Not, not all <laughs> yeah. about you have friends that make spirits and they want to taste testers or, you know, whatever you want. Yeah, you, yeah. You competing coquito with you Henry. Yeah, I'm it. willing to sample. Um, any of those things, perfectly fine. So... There we go with the Angels. Uh, he will be fascinating to watch this year. I hope he stays healthy for all 60 games, and I hope he pitches and hits for all 60 games. I'd like to see what he can do, uh, even if it's not a full season. So that's Otani for us. Rob, I know you're anxious to get to this Rockies, so you bring that up now. 
All right, so we've got the Colorado Rockies, one of the oddest teams to me in baseball year in and year out because it's like every time I look at their farm system, I'm like, this team could be super good one day. And then somehow they just always don't have a great major league product, and it's also never embarrassingly bad. So they might be the most mediocre farm team – I mean, the most mediocre team – in majors in general. Hey, am I off base in saying that? Anyone nope. disagree with that? Not at all. Yeah. They Trout, are the... Rendon, and Otani and Coors Field? Man, it's going to turn oh, into fucking... God. Yeah, they are, they are perfectly mediocre. The schedule uh, starts with fucking... Texas, Oakland, <laughs> San Diego. Derby. Yeah, I mean, you look at the schedule, it's not... You know, nothing sticks out to me. We'll go back to you, Sean, since this is, again, another contender. Uh, with the in the NL West, what uh, what do you think of the Rockies? Um, I'm in agreement with you. It seems like the only time that the Rockies actually make the playoffs or contend is when they get two or three starters to somehow navigate their way through the season and have a career year. Who was the pitcher two years ago that had a great year? I forgot his name. Freeland, Kyle Freeland. Kyle Freeland had a Freeland. great yeah. two years John, ago, right? Oh, I thought you meant um, John yeah. Gray. John and Chris, then what, what happened? Good John example. Too. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened last year? He's back to five, five plus ERA, right? It seems like that's the only time that the Rockies do well. It's either that or when they have just a lights out bullpen, which, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they've had. Other than that, you know, they're the ultimate mediocre 500 team, I think. Yeah, I don't even get. There's a reason Arenado wants out of his tractor, out of his contract after one fucking year. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, can I chime in here? Can I chime in for this uh, moment here? Uh, yeah, what do you want to say about the Rockies? Henry? Fuck Arenado. <laughs> Please tell me what you feel about Arenado. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be a Dodger, I think. That's Henry Zotani. What, <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> it's so true. What is your outlook for Arenado this year, Henry? You know what's going to happen this year? He's going to suck this year. And everyone's <laughs> going to say, oh, it was because of the 60 games. And then look where he's playing. Yeah, man. Fuck Aaron Arnold. Aaron Arnold is the most overrated player we've seen in a very, very long time. His splits tell you that. Yes. Everything tells you that. He's a stud defensively. He's overrated with the bat. Very good player. He's not a great player. He's not the player everyone makes him out to be. He's a good a player who plays a, a exceptional defense. I will give him that. But he is extremely overrated. He may make the Hall of Fame. It'll all be thanks to Coors. We have somebody in the group that loves to give us the excuse that Coors doesn't give you what is it, Kyle? He loves to say Burger, that, yeah. Or uh, is it Kyle Rocky Sperger? Yeah. Yeah. Like, stop, stop. He, he tries to make the argument it's not Coors and it's not the air and stop. It's the corner cutouts. Arenado's overrated as hell. Let me ask I you agree. this, Henry. Uh, between him and Charlie Blackman, who would you rather trade for away from Coors? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't touch Blackman. Okay. I'll take Arenado because, I mean, they both bring stellar defense, but stellar defense at third base saves a hell of a lot of runs. I'm, I'm just trying to see how high on the garbage dump they rank to you. Oh, so I mean, to... I'm still a baseball fan first, but okay. I just think Arenado is just grossly overrated. I will say this for Arenado. I've been to Coors Field once, took a tour of uh, their team field and everything, or the team store and everything, and Arenado hit about a 460-foot home run that day. <laughs> probably probably 420 anywhere else, although in Colorado, 420 is pretty popular too. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, you all see the home run the fucking trout hitting Coors two years ago? <laughs> I didn't. How far was that? Like 500? It was like 473 feet or something like that. The ball tra – yeah, Trevor Story hit one just as far that day. So, it uh, the ball definitely I mean, travels there. I mean, it, it does. Yeah, yeah it, it's silly, though, to think that Chorus doesn't have an effect beyond its dimensions. I, I think we can all agree on that. It has um, since day one. Since day one, it's been like that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting – Matt, we're getting some feedback in the comment section. The Rockies, I guess, start hot. I don't – I haven't looked this up, Rob. I don't know if you can just glance quickly at their last few seasons, see what kind of starts they get. So that might favor them. Matt, do you have any any opinion here on the Rockies? Uh, do they have any shot at competing for anything? I don't think so, no. I will say this. The divisions, the Western Even divisions, the I think, are, are further apart than the other two. Like, there is a distinct – hierarchy in both divisions and that is making the show go very quickly so <laughs> so 
Uh, yeah, it, we we can move on from the Rockies. I am curious, Rob, if you can you, you can go to the next team, but in in the interim, if you want to just let let us know how the Rockies do to begin the year, um, we'll move on to Texas here. I'm going to start with some Henry. Let's start with you with Texas. It, another weird team to me, but what what are your thoughts on the Rangers? Texas is a very weird team. I don't see them competing. They'll probably be right around 500, maybe just under it. Well, what's interesting to me with Texas is. They have a chance. They have an opportunity to trade Kluber, Kyle Gibson, you know, uh, Lance Lynn, and get some stuff in return for some of these guys. And I think that'll be their best bet. If they see that they're not going to really go anywhere, which I don't see them going anywhere, I'd look to trade those guys and get as much as I can right now. Yeah, they seem to be adding <laughs> and not subtracting. I don't and agree. I don't know what the game plan is because, like, Lance Lynn, even if he was great last year, even if he's great this year, is not going to be great in a year or two. Uh, so I don't know really. Wasn't Lynn, in, wasn't Lynn in Houston last year? No, no he, was, he was Texas. I will say one thing I'm excited for is uh, Nick Solak. You know, I know yeah. he got, he, he got um, it was questions whether he would make the team. Then you had the injury to Willie Calhoun, and so he looks to be their projected starting left field. I want to see that kid play. Yeah, I agree. He's a good on base type guy. Uh, Offer some other stuff too. Rob, you've got the Rocky results. Let's hear. Let's hear what. How have the Rockies started the last few years? Is there any truth to this? No, I'm just. I'm still looking. Well, keep oh, all right, just teasing me. I see. Um, <laughs> speaking of teasing, we've got Brian saying Arenado is better than Andujar. I think that's probably true. Although <laughs> it's, uh, it doesn't really matter. Andrew Har might win a ring and Arenado never will. So I don't really care. <laughs> uh, we move to at a, you. Fraction, at a fraction of the cost. Yeah. He's also making league minimum, not over $200 million or whatever Arenado is making. So we yeah. move to you, Sean, 2020 Texas Rangers. You have to play them. I'm seeing three times. Yeah. Three times. What any? I mean, the series probably isn't going to matter much. Do you have any thoughts on Texas and their future? Um, I think I think they have some good bats, but uh, the problem with them is Mike Miner and Lance Lynn last year. I think pitched way over their heads. Yeah, yeah I don't think I don't think either of them will pitch even eighty percent as well as they did last year. Miner was great, and if you look at Lynn, you know he was very good. And uh, I don't think that's going to hold up. I think that Texas is going to be a team the Dodgers could probably beat up on. Yeah, the yeah. Dodgers play 10 games with them, Vince. The Dodgers play 10 games with the Rangers? Yeah. Holy nice. fuck. Where are you nice. seeing are you not reading? Are you not reading the LA Angels as those two? I don't think so. Yeah, they're uh, not in the same division, so they're definitely I think, not playing. You know 10. what? I think I, was, uh, I think I was reading the Angels. I'm sorry. Okay, guys. yeah. yeah. You got this, this three games. <laughs> I, like, I know we play them a lot. <laughs> yeah, you got me excited there. You got that, <laughs> that three-game series the week of August. Weekend of August 28th is the only one I see for the Dodgers. Um, but the angels, like they be, should... Henry, like you always do. Yeah, you're gonna get Sean uh, excited, man. That's my specialty. Get people excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, good point. They lost Mazera. Uh, yeah. He's a he's a weird player too. <laughs> Just in very Texas fashion. I don't really know what to make of him. The guy could hit 500 foot home runs, um, but he also disappears for long periods of time. Joey, they've got Gallo over there. What's the di Gallo's healthy now? Because yeah. he was hurt earlier, right? Okay, no, so Gallo's he's good. Healthy. He's, yeah, he's, I do, I do like Gallo a lot. I think he's underrated. Does he repeat what he did last year, though? I think so. I, I Gallo? think Gallo. About, yeah. I think Gallo's turned a corner. He's a little bit more of a complete hitter, not kind of like a sideshow freak anymore. He's more yeah, of he, like an he, actual. His plate, his plate discipline got a lot better. He yeah. makes a lot more he contact. He made a lot more contact last year. I think he's yeah. a, under. I think he's underrated. I like Gallo a lot. Yeah, yeah, he I'm, made he made uh, he turned around his his game uh, offensively. He's cut the strikeouts down. He's putting the bat on the ball. You know, he he yep. he, he changes. He's he's obviously worked at his craft, and you know you got to give that some respect. No, and exactly. they've got like yep. Delino DeShield Jr. He's still there, right? He's yeah. there. Like I don't know what uh, the Texas Rangers could lose like forty games, and it wouldn't surprise me. And they could also be five hundred, and it wouldn't surprise me. I really have no idea. And like you said, Sean, like Mike Miner and and Lance Lynn pitched like number twos last year. They did, and they could very well fall off a cliff this year, and that wouldn't surprise me. So I Not don't know what to expect. <laughs> Um, they do have the new stadium, worth pointing out. I, I saw it when it was under construction. Obviously, I haven't been in there yet. It looks like it could be cool, at least on the inside. The outside's a little weird. 
Um, and if you've ever been to that part of, I guess it's Arlington, it is literally right next door to the Cowboys Stadium. So if you're ever in town, uh, Greater Dallas, I highly suggest tours of both. Those are my two cents there. Um, that's like that's like Broadway and Off Broadway, Cowboy Stadium and <laughs> Texas Rangers. <laughs> the Cowboy Tour, I am a lifelong Giants fan. Sean, I'm sure you can relate to this. Um, the cow a tour of Cowboy Stadium is super cool. It I is, can imagine. It is massive. It is gaudy. It is very Jerry Jones. His daughter and what his daughters and wife helped design it. <laughs> and um, it is just it's super tell. cool. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's a really great tour too. It's like three hours. So Do they have a Louis Vuitton shop and fucking <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, I didn't no, see you. It's probably. fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> really? They they have like marble and they have like diamond in their marble. Like as you walk around, it's like it's yeah. very like there's just things that are absurd. The most television screens I think of any stadium in the world. The largest screen last I checked of any stadium in the world. Just Amazing. everything you, every it, it's very much like Jerry Jones on his yacht doing the draft. That's like that stadium <laughs> in a nutshell. So. There, that's my that's my Arlington connection. Uh, I didn't go inside Old Texas. I didn't get to go inside the new one because it wasn't ready yet. Uh, but they have opening day this year, so that should be cool. I don't think Texas is there yet. I don't know when Texas will be there. I don't consider them a contender, so we can probably move on from them unless anyone has any other thoughts on the Rangers. No. Nope. I just, like I said, I, I just think their best bet is just if they see that they're going to start slow, trade off some of those veteran arms. I just want to get to uh, Corey's divisional champs, the D-backs. The douchebags? <laughs> Is that next, Rob? Nope. <laughs> we're, we're ah. to... It's the James. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's start with Sean here because I can only imagine how much you love the Giants. Uh, <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about San Francisco's chances? Um, I think they had their – run and they capitalized three times and I think it's over. I think it's a long rebuild for them. And they're doing it the wrong way. They keep going out and signing guys that they don't need that aren't they're not gonna win. They're not gonna the guys that aren't gonna be around, you know, for them when they actually do contend. So I think they're not very well run anymore. I think they're as mediocre as can be this year. And uh they don't scare me at all. I don't think there's any I don't think they have a great lineup. I don't think they have great starters. I don't think they have much of a bullpen. So I don't know what what to fear about the Giants other than a few guys that have talent, you know? Yeah. By the way, is that Johnny Cueto? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. <laughs> when Johnny Cueto's your schedule, your schedule face, you, you got some problems. But, uh, yeah. The, only, the, the interesting I see about the Giants is that – is that um, Nothing. Posey opted out. <laughs> so we might be able to see their – their catching prospect actually yeah. come through and do some work, but that's true. Yeah. What's his name again? The catching Tyler, prospect? Is it Tyler? Uh, oh. It's not Connor, Joe Connor. It's on the tip of my tongue and I can't fucking it's, figure it out. Joey Bart. Joey Bart. Joey Bart. catching prospect, please let us know. Joey Bart. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So he is definitely their, their top guy. Yeah. Um, it's, been a, it's been a lot of fun beating up on the Giants the last few years. I got to <laughs> say. Man, that's got to feel therapeutic for you. That, that, that kind of takes the sting away of not getting rings like they did. But because they're nothing now and the Dodgers are at the top of baseball, you know. I, so. I agree. I, I think the Giants maximized every ounce of that core. But yes. that core was very short-lived, which is weird to me. Like the Phillies core, which only won one World Series, they still lasted into like their mid-30s. Every single Giants core player from those World Series rings, like, fell off a cliff at 31. It's it's very, like, Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Matt Cain, Tim Lincecum. Yes. Um, and Sandoval even, fell even Madison off. Bumgarner. Yeah. And Sandoval fell off the end of the buffet. So. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Sandoval <laughs> got super, super fat, uh, more so than usual. Uh, yeah, it's just – it's weird – like that that makes me think and i'm gonna you know go on my yankee history hill here the yankees dynasty in the 90s was so it, it's probably never going to happen again because those guys all played successfully into their late 30s and yes. were, and you know you had two hall of famers and probably another two to three fringe hall of famers um, i think the giants i think the giants three titles proves that winning titles takes a lot of luck you know it, everything's it got to break yeah. right 
they yeah, they had the right right mix. Interesting question here with the Giants from from 2012, obviously, or from 2010 through 2016, we'll say, I would say is probably what their run was. Do you guys consider that a dynasty? They did win three in five years, but they also yeah. never won back-to-back, and I don't think made the playoffs back-to-back years. I, no. I would say so. I would say so. I, in baseball, I, I, in baseball, I would still three, call it a dynasty. They yeah. had fucking quite the run. Three See, and five old, years in baseball, I'm I would, would say so. What do you think, Sean? I'm old school with the word dynasty. I think you have to win three in a row. Although, in a modern wow. context, the word has changed somewhat. You know, if you win three within, you know, seven or eight years, you're considered a dynasty. But for me, you got to win three in a row. You got to get three feet. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I, can respect that. Of, I can respect that. Look, for the purposes of being a Yankee fan, I agree with Sean. I think that the Yankees are the last dynasty that we've seen yes. for a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't even consider the Red Sox as dynasty. You know? Who? I wouldn't even. I wouldn't I even know. consider the Red I Sox. I don't, I don't recognize the Red Sox this year. <laughs> I don't consider winning every six years and falling apart the other five as a dynasty either. Yeah, I'm exactly. In agreement with no, you. not at all. Uh, how bad? How, how bad were the Giants in between their titles? A couple times? That's what's weird. That, you know, that's, the only, weird yeah. that's the only reason I can see that. To me, like, if, if you're to be a dynasty, you have to dominate the sport for like five plus years. Yes. But. I also feel like to be a dynasty, you have to win three out of five or more than that. Uh, yes. You have to win at least three and it has to be in five years or less to, to me. So I can yes. see it from both sides. Uh, I tend to favor dynasty only because it's baseball and I think it's really, really hard to win three out of five. So, it is hard. But the Giants had no margin for error and they still did that. So I'll give them that credit, but I'm totally with you, Sean. And Henry can attest, he's known me long enough. I am such a... A, a critic of rebuilds, <laughs> and the Giants are doing it terribly. It is an Terrible. awful, awful rebuild. They, yeah. they did every oh, single – every mistake you can make in a rebuild, the Giants are it's doing. Yes. It's very similar to the Phillies, but at least the Phillies eventually got the hint, and now they're kind of retooling now. The Giants, I don't think, have gotten that hint yet. There was no major trade off. Now their core guys have no value. Uh, and they don't have a great farm. They have a few – Bart being one of them, they have a few guys in there. But they, they've got no collateral to rebuild, and they just keep hanging on to these old guys. They're still over the hill. They're not yeah. a particularly young team. They're not a high upside team. So and the, the Giants, Giants, they signed the veterans. Giants crave that, that veteran presence, which yeah. does them no help whatsoever. No. And they still have expensive – Yeah, they don't even have a flexible run. payroll yet. So, yeah, yeah, even if, if you wanted to say, hey, we can trade off of Johnny Credo at what cost because he's getting paid so much money. Same, with the, same thing with Samarja. Yeah. And, you know, poor Bruce Bochy, he gets replaced by fucking Gabe Kapler of all people. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, that's an Gabe Kapler, thing. most people would say, oh, thank God he's out of Philly. That guy doesn't belong in baseball. And the Giants go, hey. Kapler takes the skin off his chicken you nugget. Run and run and out. It's a fucking joke. There's two I, reasons I, I, that I, I believe managers matter. One is Aaron Boone because he's terrible. And the other is Bruce Bochy because he was great. Like, Bruce yeah. Bochy and Terry Francona stick out to me as guys who actually make a difference game to game and can and – can, and I have no doubt Bochy had a hand in, in helping win those titles. Like Bochy may go into the Hall of Fame. I mean – I respect and, Bochy to the – yeah. yeah. He was the best game manager. Game manager. Yeah, I think it's an insult to replace him with a Gabe Kappel. That's a slap in the face. I, do I mean, too. I'm old enough. Should've, I'm old, you should have replaced him with Mike Sosha. That's better than Kappler. I'm old enough to – I remember Bochi as a player. I mean, I respect him even then. Yeah, yeah. Bochi really gr- grew up too. I don't think he was always a fantastic manager, but he definitely be- he became the t- yeah. <laughs> he became the top. Of the- yeah, Sean's like I remember when Bochi was born. But, uh- <laughs> so I was like I remember when I saw Babe Ruth point. And he- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. We we need our own veteran. We were doing it the Giants way today. We've got a veteran presence on the show, so. Uh, by the way, we have Alexis Guzman in the comment section, who I have not heard from before. So welcome, Alexis, saying that he uh, uh, they work for the Rangers and that summer camp will shock a lot of people. So Alexis is excited for the Rangers prospects, probably does not right. agree. Yeah, and works for the Rangers. So Alexis, if you want to pull an Eddie and send us free stuff or have someone on the show for us, we're all about it. Thank you for joining. Uh, or if you yeah. just want to keep commenting and tout the Rangers, that's cool, too. So, I mean, I say I'm excited about prospects every year, but it doesn't really work out. 
<laughs> so, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Chris Flores too. She's a she's a diehard Giants fan. She's in the comments all the time. So sorry, Chris. Oh. I thought for some reason Chris was an Angels fan, but I, I guess Giants. A, yeah, I think she's a Giants fan. She's like the anti Lori. I want Lori and Chris to have a podcast now and and <laughs> just sort this stuff out. Yeah, you know why Lori's great though? Because her husband's a Giants fan. So imagine going home and being an Angels fan, and your husband's a Giants fan now. Yeah, that's if my wife actually like liked baseball and didn't tolerate it. Uh, she's probably a Red Sox fan, but now she's a Red Sox Yankees fan because of me. But I have to deal with it with the in-laws, which is not as bad as living with them. So, yeah. hey, Giants Angels were the very first wild card World Series ever from both teams, yeah. from both sides. That's yeah, right. good point. Yes, that uh, that did happen. That was a great World Series too. It really was. It was a really good one. I love rally. Was that the Rally Monkey? Yep. yep. That was Angels throttled the Yankees after being in the World Series four years in a row. They just like took a shit on the Yankees and they I to told the I love I love that. Absolutely every moment of it. Scott, <laughs> I mean, Scott Spezio. Scott yeah, Spezio. That, that Angels, that oh my god. <laughs> that Angels Yankees series wasn't even like I watched that series and I wasn't even like, God, we like we missed the mark. We should have been back in the World Series. I was like, the Angels kicked the shit out of the Yankees in that series. And we, I mean, you guys, course, you guys won the first game, and then we like fucking train wrecked you the next four. Yeah, and I think we blew like a five or six run lead in one of those games. But, yes, you um, did. Yeah, <laughs> the but, Angels were that one team who had the Yankees number. They were a thorn in their side. Yes, always, always. You know? Even now, going to, going to California, I still fear the Angels a lot. Uh, Yankee Stadium's been a different story like the last few years. But I'm um, laughing. I'm laughing because in the comment section, Chris says every guy she's dated has been a Dodger fan. That's why she's single. <laughs> <laughs> No, she has great taste. I have something to say about that, about that Angels team. Um, yeah, that Angels team was uh, thorn on the Yankee side at, during that time. Yeah. Howie Kendrick was the epitome, epitome um, Yankee killer of that during that yes. series. Yes, he was. Just, that was on our Howie Yankee Kendrick killer show. Howie Kendrick is a playoff monster for some yeah. reason. I don't know just what it is. Howie Kendrick is still doing it, yeah. Like yes, Howie Kendrick is a professional hitter, man. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, last year when it, it, when he was with the Nats, the Nats was the first time I ever cheered for a home run that he made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very complete hitter. He was featured on our Yankee Killer show, so we absolutely are aware of Kendrick's <laughs> murdering ability. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Angels were the only team in the majors to have a winning record against the Yankees in the '90s. Yes, wow. Yeah. Or, wow. or under the Joe Torre era, one of the two. Yeah. They were the only team. But uh, and I, I, I think we're giving this team way too much time. Yeah, all right. We can move on from the Giants. <laughs> we got through like half the show in 20 minutes, so we had to stop yeah, somewhere. Yeah, so we got to, you know, we got to take oh, our time God. now, Henry. Even Johnny yeah. Cueto's looking at us like, yeah. Yeah, we let's can spend, move on we can from spend Cueto. extra time on the Dodgers. <laughs> okay, ready for the next team? And then the Mets fans are being Mets fans in the comments section arguing about freaking Hansel Robles and, and Familia. Like, come on. Like, come on. Cool. We're upsetting my new friend Alexis by talking about the Giants too much, so we'll move on. Uh, on to Oakland. All right, so now things get interesting. Oh my god! Even their schedule looks like it was made by a fucking guy getting paid nine dollars an hour. I hate the A's colors. <laughs> uh, I am right there with you. It's always been terrible. Looking at their schedule, uh, you know, start with the Angels. That's whatever. Rockies, Mariners, Texas. I mean, this is not a bad schedule, guys. I'm looking at this. Besides that Houston series, they're kind of treading until they have a late really August. Easy schedule. Yeah. And to end the year, they're finishing with the, the Giants and Mariners sandwiching the Dodgers there. So, yeah, this builds on my thoughts about the A's. But, Henry, let's go to you. What do you what do you feel about Oakland? I'm big on the A's, 35 to 40 wins. Um, first place, really, really big on the A's. You know, you guys know I love uh, Matt Chapman. Matt, Matt and Matt. Matt and Matt. O Olsen and Chapman, two of the most underrated players in the He's game. He's skiing with those two. So, Simeon's so. underrated, too. <laughs> Jimmy is very, very underrated, and he, he had a wonderful year last year. A monster year. Um, Jesus Lazardo might be playing this year. Those, those he guys. Is. That, I like him a lot. Um, Loriano's another guy that doesn't even get spoken about. That dude just mm -hmm. crushes it. I like him a lot. That too. guy's arm is fucking off the chart. It, man. That, that team is absolutely loaded, and they're going to make noise. I got them penciled in for at least 35 wins. Their pitching staff. I said this last year. Uh, I'll say it again this year. It bears repeating. I think their pitching staff is scarier than Tampa's. And 
I know that Tampa has the established arms. They've got Glass Snow. They've got Morton. Uh, they've got Snell. But if you look at Puck and Lazardo, Did actually mention Snell's name? <laughs> yeah, he's going to play. Um, if you – if you look at Puck and Lazardo and Minaya and all of the – and uh, at, there's one other guy I'm missing over there in Oakland. Frankie Montez. Yes. Yeah, Frankie Montez. We forget about him. He got suspended last year with the mm -hmm. steroids. Um, former Dodger. Former Dodger prospect. Frankie Mike, Montez. Fi Mike Fires is still Mike on Fires, my favorite player in the world. Absolutely <laughs> love everything about Mike Fires. I he love is, Mike Fires. I would raise my kids to be like Mike Fires. I hope they're as <laughs> honest as Mike Fires. Yes, and he's a good veteran presence. I, I think Chris Bassett is on the team still, too. Yeah, I mean, this Oakland team, those, those young arms, man. I, and this is now a season that benefits them because a lot of those guys are going to have innings limits. Now they're not going to. Yeah. So they're scary. They scare me more than Tampa does. They scare me more than Houston does as a Yankees fan. Uh, I have not really revealed a lot about my picks, but I will say I think Oakland's going to win the West this year. I think it's time. They are stacked everywhere. That I mean, bullpen great, was really – season, But once they hit the playoffs – well, that's a different story. They're like twins light when it comes to the playoffs. So I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not worried about that part. But this team is scary all around. The bullpen was really good last year, except for, um, yeah, well, no, it was really good last year. Two, I'm thinking about two years ago when when they, they lost to the Yankees, the bullpen kind of shit themselves. But yeah. it's a good bullpen. It's a, it's a very, very high upside, maybe lower floor rotation. Uh, and then, of course, the lineup has all sorts of guys who can mash who no one's ever heard of. They, lost, it's they lost Ryan Butcher, though, who was fucking great for them last year. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, the other thing is, too, I think I think Oakland still has a pretty good farm system, too. I think they've got some guys. Well, they, do, they, they do. They do. They have that yeah. for sure. So, Sean, this becomes a little interesting. This is maybe the first team that, you know, is not going to be so easy for the Dodgers head-to-head -head and, uh, you know, what, what do you think there? I mean, is you only play Oakland. I don't want to screw this up. Uh, what, we'll, we'll probably a series. Yeah, the three games to end the year almost. What do you What do you think? Of, that series could be big. Maybe not for you guys, but maybe for Oakland. But what do you think about the A's? I'm with Henry and you guys on the A's. I love the A's. I'm bullish on the A's. I think they don't have any real strong weaknesses. I think they hit for power. They get on base. They catch the ball. Like you said, the pitching staff is better than you think. The bullpen's good. They're well managed. They're, you know, I don't see any downside with the A's. I think they're uh, going to be a playoff team easy and a tough, tough out in the playoffs. Yeah, Melvin really is a really good manager. I love the way he manages. Yes. Yeah, I love the A's. that's a good point too. Yeah, I uh, Oakland's got a good thing going. That ballpark, I think, really favors their young pitchers because it's obviously a pitcher's ballpark, but they have the bats that can still mash there. So that's a tough place to go into and, and compete. If they could only not get it to smell like piss all the time, I'd go there more <laughs> often. I'd yeah, just no. like to add that I drafted Marcus Simeon last year in the 10th uh, round in my oh. fantasy draft. So. Don't you love those? Those are like the diamond in the rough pick. Yeah. <laughs> I, about took, I took Frankie Montez last year in like, the, nice. in like the 19th <laughs> round. Nice. Frankie yeah. Montez is good, man. That's that's my – and I got Matt Chapman dining. I'm a little invested in the A's here. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Matt it, Chapman, the best third baseman in baseball. I love them, but also hate them as well. Fight me. I almost, see them as a, I almost see them as like a poor man's Dodgers because of the depth and the lack of weaknesses – that they have it's tough because i really like the way the a's and rays both play baseball and living in greater business, though. It's their bullpen. yeah um living in greater orlando i have a soft spot for the rays because that's what the local team i can see and oakland i just like the way they play baseball but they're both going to be the biggest threats to the yankees and the al this year in my mind i, I gotta disagree on the uniforms though i think those kelly green you uniforms, like them I like them. I've always liked the, the the green and the yellow. This is because you were alive in the 70s, though. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. The, sw the, sw the swing and A's won it all when I was born. So. Yeah, like you you lived through that cocaine era where green and yellow was an attractive combination. Yes. I remember the Pittsburgh Pirates had like 12 different uniforms one season. Yeah, the, the big hat. <laughs> That's my favorite. The, the, what was that, like the 79 Pirates who won it all? They had the, like, massive hats. 
Yeah, the yeah. round hats with the stars, the yeah. stars yeah. and all that. Yeah, that was great. What a time to be alive, man. I just would have been on acid for 10 years trying to get, <laughs> trying to <laughs> like those uniforms. <laughs> I wasn't old enough for that. I came of age in the 80s, but I do remember <laughs> the 70s. I do remember the 70s. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm conditioned to like the colors that the A's have to offer. But I like the green. It's really just the yellow and green that to me is like. Oh, the Kelly know. green. The Kelly green is nice for sure. Yeah, for sure. And Oakland used to be a house of horrors for the Yankees too. In like the late only Oakland though, they used to die in the and it's probably still the same. But uh, that stadium's tough to play in, in unless you're a certain type of team. Uh, um, their, their stadium gets a lot of hate, but you know I hear that the atmosphere in that stadium is like. It's like Mardi Gras. I, I was going to say, have either of you guys been there living on the No, but my, co my cousin went there, and he said it was like no other baseball experience he's ever had. He's like, there's people just walking around like he felt. He said Mardi Gras. He felt like he was in New Orleans. There's so people going true. around selling they have stuff. Fans showing, they have fans they showing their tits? Yeah. They have fans showing their I mean, tits? I can see that they play, like, there's a whole band that comes and fucking plays drums the whole time. Yeah, I yeah, heard I about think, that. Yeah, I heard I about that. I think they reflect the city of Oakland. It's very, you know... A very different kind of city. There's no real place like Oakland in, yeah. in the United States. I've been to the Coliseum six times. Wow. Nice. All right. Is it a party? Oh, it's a, it's a party. It just smells bad. Is it a, is it a party because <laughs> usually they aren't do. any good? What? Is it a party because they usually aren't any good? <laughs> I mean, yes and no. It's like going to Camden. You have fun because Camden's a nice ballpark, but you get the team yeah. shit. The Rays are a great social distancing party, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about the game, and you, there's no one around you either. Who, who uh, was the player that said, Florida and I couldn't go to a fucking Rays game? <laughs> who was the player that said, I'm used to no fans, I played in Tampa? Yeah, and, that was our, well, was it Kiermaier? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, someone like Snell that. said yeah. that. Who did? <laughs> Snell said that? It that sounds Snell, like something yeah. Snell would say. Yeah, he, he likes saying things. That... No, it wasn't Snell. It was a Met. It was uh... oh, Someone shit. who played for the Marlins and the Rays said, I'm it used was, to it. It was a Met that just said, was it a uh... shit? Joey sent it to me the other day. It wasn't yeah, Lomo, it. right? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> he I says a lot of stuff. I hate Lomo. I don't know. If anyone who is so, someone attribute that quote. Lo, uh, yeah, and Brian's telling me it's Lomo. Joey just Lomo. sent it to me. Maybe it was Logan. someone or something else that he said. Logan Morrison would say something like that, but uh, I don't I know. I think it was sure. Logan Morrison. Yeah. It was okay. Logan yeah. Morrison. So there you go. Yeah, Lomo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the same guy who said he should have been in the home run derby instead of Gary Sanchez. And then Gary Sanchez <laughs> hit like a thousand home runs in the home in the first round. Uh, anyway, yeah, so well, that, I didn't know that about Oakland. I, I had heard that their stadium sucks and smells, but I and like it like leaks or something. But it's um, a good time. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know it was that great oh, of a time. This party and their concessions are cheap as fuck. Yeah, well, I bet Lou Wolf runs a tight ship there. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, when I, when I went to LA, that was one thing. I got the fifty dollars tickets that included the food. Man, that was pretty good. Oh, yeah, the all-you-can-eat Dodger Dogs and Popcorn right, right, and, and, right and field nachos, bleachers. that's the yep. best ticket in L.A. Me and my son, 50 bucks, all-you-can-eat, right yep. field bleacher ticket, that was worth it. That's yes, the way to do it, is. I agree. By the way, we're getting a lot of pushback in the comments. Uh, not a lot of people on the A's bandwagon. <laughs> Really? I, I see. I see a lot of the, fans, uh, that's why. I see a lot of those new Astro fans, the New York Mets Astros. Those fans. Yeah. Are, you know, the Mastros fans the want us to not forget about the Mastros. We will get to them in a second. <laughs> we'd uh, like to forget. We'd like to forget about the Astros. Yeah, we. we yeah, well, I, I. We I should forget about not, the Astros. What the Petros? <laughs> so. Well, we'll get to them. I, I, we've got thoughts on the Astros, I'm sure. But I do think Oakland, you know, this reminds me a lot of, of the AL East last year. You know, we, Yankees were up and coming. Red Sox were defending champs and, and really, really good. Won the division, obviously won 108 games. But you got to take that leap of faith once in a while. And I think this could be the year Oakland passes Houston finally. So we'll, we'll see and how By the way, Vince and I called the Red Sox not making the playoffs. No, Henry and you, I had them winning the wild card. I had the Yankees winning the division. Henry to straight up said Red Sox will not make the playoffs. He was right. And got laughed at. I, I was on yeah. that bandwagon too. I get, yeah, I give credit where it's due. Um, that Good is job. one of Good like, idea. that's like one of three times I've been wrong in my life. So I have to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We move on to the diamond.
Diamondbacks. Corey Decker's still with us, as far as we know. Yeah. So, Corey, is, your divisional he, camps are here. He's an he's an Angels fan, but he lives in Arizona. As does Harlan Hugh, if he's watching. Uh, and, and Matt Bushnell, obviously, White Sox fan. That's the trend with Arizona. You root for a different team, and then Arizona is also there, uh, the Diamondbacks. So here we are. Another Diamondbacks are like a better run Rockies to be. It's like they're never quite a playoff team. They win in the 80s every year. I don't know what they're doing, but I will say I like the Diamondbacks farm system and, and some of their young talent. So we'll, we can start with, uh, with you, Matt. What do you think about the Diamondbacks? I mean, I like them. They're not going to be divisional champs like fucking Corey thinks so. Does he? Did he say that? Yeah, he said that in the SMD chat today. That's oh. insane. <laughs> uh, Sean, this probably is, is more relevant for you than if we have threats of the Diamondbacks winning the division. How do you feel about the Diamondbacks? <laughs> well, I think I also think the losing Frankie is going to hurt them for sure. I, I don't like the Diamond. I think they're going to take a step down from where they were the last few years. I don't like their lineup at all. You know, they have a couple bats – I like Marte. I don't like their pitching staff. The bullpen doesn't scare you. They're not great defensively. I think they're mediocre through and through. And I think they're going to be less than what they were the last couple of years. Henry? I like the Diamondbacks a little bit more than that. They, they added Starling Marte. They have both Cattell Marte, Starling Marte, David Peralta. They added some depth to their rotation. They got Mad Bum. Robbie Ray's is a stud. Luke Weaver, they'll make some noise. I don't see them winning the division, but I think they'll be better than people. Can I'm a little down on Robbie Ray. It seems like he really? just can't fuck. He can't I, mean, I love to tell, too, but he's got wow. to prove it for more than one year to fucking get my vote. I'm he with strikes, you. He, Robbie I'm Ray with strikes you. everybody out, but I don't. he doesn't seem to find the plate enough. Oh, I'm they also you, got Sean. Cole Calhoun. I hate pitchers who have unbelievable stuff and don't have command but in yes. his case he doesn't have control he has i'm yes. sure his command's okay and uh robbie ray fits the bill he's like a better left-handed version of daniel cabrera just the all the talent in the world he had that one season that was pretty good i don't know what to make of robbie ray but i don't trust him i don't like him i'm not expecting him to have a great year but he certainly if he ever puts it together he will i just those guys sometimes never put it together one year, three three years ago, Robbie Ray was very good, right? What was he had? He was in he was on top ten in Cy Young three years like ago. Like two or three years ago, yeah, yeah. it wasn't exactly. long ago. Years ago. About two yeah, years. Yeah, but ago. since then, there's been a lot of regression since then, with the whip and the walks. <laughs> I, I think, think the thing is, is the Dodgers absolutely beat the shit out of them this weekend too. <laughs> yeah, they did. They they took their lunch money. And, oh my uh, god, the Dodgers yes. beat the shit out of them this weekend. <laughs> yes, yes. I think overall how I feel is if you're relying on Robbie Ray, you're not in a great spot. <laughs> so exactly. if he's like your four or five starter, fine. The upside's there. That could be a real coup for you. But if he's a front end of your rotation, you got problems. Um, think... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I don't no. think I don't think they I don't think they have um, enough <laughs> other than some power and some speed in the lineup. The pitching is just not there. I don't like the bullpen. Sorry, time out, guys. Dong yes, alert, sir. dong alert, dong alert, dong what alert. Happened? Aaron Judge just went deep. Oh, that's what I – that's three <laughs> in two days now. I just watched it. <laughs> Woo! It's, it's amazing what happens when you have things like an oblique and a shoulder and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I thought, I thought Sean was celebrating Aaron Judge. He's home celebrating run. the same way I would for an Aaron Judge home run. I like that here on Dong City. That's my kind of celebration. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, is it tied now, Henry? Well, this is like our first live baseball update. Um, I don't know. I looked up just when it's he did commercial. It. It's okay. not tied. It's two to. It's still two to one, Phillies. Two to one. Okay. Producer producing, baby. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Rob's got the command center up in the background. Um, good. So, <laughs> yeah, we have our first Dong City Dong Alert, Aaron Judge homering. Uh, All right. Yeah, so going back there, Diamondbacks, uh, either of you been to the – any of you been to their ballpark? I, have. I hear it's nice. I hear it's nice, though. So I've been to it, and I'll preface it by saying I went with everyone who has never been to the TROP. I'm the only one of my friends who's been to the TROP since I live near it. And it is a better version of the trop. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> really clean, really like it, it's got good sight lines. Um, 
It's obviously indoors. I think most, I don't remember if it's retractable. That day it was indoors. They've got a cool bar inside that's like free to enter. All that's nice. But it has zero personality whatsoever, unless you count like elderly people with oxygen tanks walking around the concourse. <laughs> that's, that's the only place I've ever seen that happen because of the air, I'm guessing. Uh, but other than that, it's got no personality whatsoever, but it's a nice place to go to a game. Is how I, that's how I feel about the trop. It's a total shithole. But it's kind of a nice place to see a game because it's cheap. What? You've got good, yeah. You've got good. good you seats. still have not seen a game at Angel Stadium, right? I have not seen a game. I've been to Angel Stadium. I know you've been inside. in it. Yeah, I have I not seen a game there. Game. I like the rocks. I'm I'm all about corny things like that. That's fuck Pride Rock. <laughs> Why? It's too Disney no. for me. Okay. Too well, Disney. hey, I live in or outside of Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> So but if you, you, if you look you, at it, dude, go, go literally pull up a picture of Pride Rock from fucking Lion King and then pull yeah. up Angel Stadium. They're like literally <laughs> the same. I want to go to Chase Field. I've heard nothing but good things about Chase Field, honestly. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 fine. It's easy to get to. It's got good bars outside. It just you go in there and you're like, okay, I don't know so what the Diamondbacks are about. Yeah, when I go to watch a game at the stadium, I like to look at sight lines. And I like to look at little quirky things like that. So I, I heard that it's a really good place to watch a baseball game. Yeah. And it has Shut up, Kygo. And the dog agrees with me. You got to like so. the pool as well. <laughs> uh, they do have the pool, yeah. I, it's, it's, a little, it's a little overrated to me. Like the Jaguars have a pool too, but I, don't, I didn't see anyone in it. So I don't know. It's not like that. I don't know. Um, it's not like Bernie Brewer's slide, or it's like that's a part of the game. It's like the pool's there, yeah, but you're, you know, you gotta look for it. Henry, what do you I think like, of? I liked how sore they were when the Dodgers yeah. celebrated in the pool when they won the division. That's that year. yes, that yeah. was great. That I was awesome. That. <laughs> that was the old changing of the guard in my mind, where that was like the last of the hardcore majority unwritten rules like brian mccann was at like his heyday at that point yeah and now we're starting that was 2013 to see, yeah was now 2013. we're starting to see that transition guys like harper have a big voice in the game and it's now okay to do things like bat flip and like tim yeah. anderson's a big player like now we're seeing the changing of the guard but right then sean was like the peak like the last of the mohicans for guys who are boring as shit and want baseball to be just as boring when, when they complained about that, I was like, really? You're upset that they celebrated in the pool? Come yeah. on. Man. Yeah, the Diamondbacks fans were fucking butthurt. They yeah, were. They were. They were very, so fans complain about the dumbest shit. I know. They really do. It's they a very, do. It's, it was very stuffy sport. If my, if, my fan, if my team did that, I'd love that shit. That's awesome. You jump right? in the fucking pool in your stadium. How much cooler does it get? Plus, that was the Dodgers' first division that they had won yeah. since uh, 2000, 2008. So it's like why? somebody imagine one of the Miami Marlins jump into the freaking aquarium and you know just start fucking having fun swimming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you see all the cops they surrounded it with last year because they're about to do the same thing? Uh, stupid. No, that's awesome. It's <laughs> like a, that's that's so Arizona to me though. I was like, just about to say they that. literally <laughs> covered it with cops so they couldn't go jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how Arizona is that? Like, old people get upset because, you know, the young hooligans want to be in the pool, so their solution is have a lot of guns surrounding it. Make sure you yeah. can't get in the pool. That's, that's Very Arizona. Arizona in sure. hey, look, just for the record, Vince, we, we're getting offers. Corey Decker says he, he's getting tickets for us, and we can stay at his house and go to Arizona. Eddie's saying he got tickets and lodging for us to, in L.A., so we're good, man. All right, man. Uh, it's a West Coast trip in my future. Hey, there's a lot of things legal on the West. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, Matt, we have, Rob, are we good to move on? Yes, we are. I'm ready to show the next team. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop <London>. <laughs> <laughs> All live here on Dong City. We did not see this coming. <laughs> That is too fucking funny. If you okay. miss spring training. There's Bregman. There's Springer. Yup. Okay. If you miss spring training. <laughs> there's Berlander there right there. There's Correa. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Where's Mike Fires? Mike Fires is hiding in the background. <laughs> He's on the A's now. Oh, this is great. There he is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, if you missed spring training, right after they did not apologize for anything with misdoings, uh, that was the Houston Astros. So we can get to the Houston Astros. Rob, you want to throw up their schedule when you have a moment? Rob is still busy finding trash can videos. Chris is also on that on that wagon of uh, giving us free stuff. I think if we go out west, so there we go. Yeah, we are well connected on the way. I like this West Coast group, right? Like I didn't get shit from the Central. Seriously. Yeah. I just convinced know, free edibles. That's all I. No did. one was like, "Come to Wrigley, I'll treat you." <laughs> no one from Philly offered us a damn cheesesteak. I mean, yeah, on. the East didn't do shit for us either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, where are the garlic fries? We're like, where was? We're really was nice Sandra? in the West Coast, okay? We're really nice. We yeah, like where, eat, where was like Sandy for the East Coast show to give me some garlic fries? Dude. So here's <laughs> here's the Houston schedule. This is the first time we can theoretically consider anything that Houston's done since 2016 to be valid. This schedule is certified to be real. Um, and we look at it. And uh, what are your takeaways? We'll start with you, Henry. Um, I think the short season benefits them greatly. They don't have to deal with fans booing them. They don't have to deal with, uh, you know, players throwing at them because now there's no fighting. Fighting's been banned. And they don't have to deal with the long grind of a season of just that. You know, that aspect is grinding and weighing on them. Initially, in the 162-game season, I had them missing the playoffs. I think, you know, they're still loaded in a short season. You know, they'll make the playoffs. They'll grab a wild card spot probably. Um, the team is too loaded in too short of a season not to do well. So... Are you officially coming off your stance? Because I think before the shortened season stuff happened, you had Houston missing the playoffs. Oh, I had, it... yeah, over 162 games. Like I said, I just think the, the stress of going to ballparks, getting booed in parking lots, getting booed all the time, they were going to get thrown at a ton by players. So there was a ton of players pissed off. A we lot of that stuff spring. went away when COVID hit. So, no fighting rule, huh? It's almost they, like it was planned. Yeah, no fighting. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. They, they they dodged the bullet here and and you know they they're still good enough to to make noise in a 60 game season and I expect them to compete for sure. Maddie, what about you? This is your division, buddy? They've been they've been running you guys for a while now. Uh, how do you feel about Three the years? Is not a while. Uh, it, it's a while in baseball world. Not to be confused with baseball. That a while world. in a 162 game season. <laughs> Well, was, I mean, the Houston's been what? They've been top of the class in the in the AL West really since what, like 2015 minus the 2016 yes. no, season? Yeah, yeah. So, it was 15. They really started. It was 15. Yeah, so you got it. five years now. The Astros have been at the top, more or less, give or take. Uh, the A's beat them twice at the, for the top what, spot. What do you What do you feel about the Astros? They're cheaters, and I hate them. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> going, for, going forward in this segment for the Houston Astros, everything will end with an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not honestly willing to – I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I really want to see what they can do without all the cheating, per se. Right? Are they really as good as they say they are? So – that's a good point. Um, this is something that has come up, I think, throughout baseball life, you know, since February, or really since, I guess, January. Um, and, and that is a good point as to what are, like, it's worth talking about, are the Astros as good as they've looked? And I know you read the report, and it claims that 2019, there was no cheating going on. So theoretically, you could say that's your baseline, the 2019 lineup, and that lineup hit like 290-something home runs. So it's pretty good. I don't believe it. I don't yeah, believe it. I, I don't, I don't either. either. I don't I believe personally, that, no. I personally think this is like every other MLB investigation ever, which is that they go 50 to 60% of the way to try and cover their ass, and then the rest of it we won't find out for another 10 or 15 years once some investigative mm. reporter does the proper research. It was the same I, thing with I, steroids. Yeah, I think they were cheating right up until the last out of the World Series last year. I completely agree I because why Why else would the Nationals be so paranoid in that series and they got tips from several coaches and players around the league to change their signs constantly. Why would they go through that if the Astros the whole year exactly. not, not only that, why, not only that, why would they stop? If they won, why would they stop? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The yeah. result why they won. They you, you think after the Red Sox did probably did the same thing back to get back to them that they were just like, all right, well we had our title and now we learned our lesson, we're done. Like that, that is the least classy, no, not at all. most arrogant, most pretentious organization probably in sports. It's a fraternity from every account we've read 
that they're run exactly like a fret, that you cannot tell me those types of personalities. Luno, after beating the Yankees, supporting a domestic violence <laughs> uh, player with domestic violence support clothing in the locker room near him, you can't tell me personalities like that learned yeah. their lesson without getting any sort of punishment and then stopped it. So I, have, I, I do that. not believe that they stopped at any point in 2019, which brings up the validity of this argument. How good is the Astros' core? Because these guys have been cheating since these guys came to the majors. It's not like Bregman had five years under his belt. Yeah, I mean, Altuve is the only guy you can say had, you know, was there first, and even he took a major step forward with the power <laughs> in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, it's still a great core, and those guys still have lots of talent. I mean, I think Springer's a great player. I think Bregman's a great player, but how great are they? We don't really know for sure. Yeah. We're not going to know until like, three years from now. Yeah, up, and Leon brings up a good point in the comments section. The Rays minus that first inning by Glasnow, which uh, there were rumors that he was tipping his pitches that inning. Uh, the Rays almost took him out last year. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. So, they did. And then the Yankees weren't that far off. <laughs> you nope. know, they, they went to the ninth inning of game six. Two of those games were won on walk-offs by the Astros. So like that series was a blowout. So the Astros aren't starting from like some juggernaut level to me where they're unbeatable. No. Uh, they, were, they were beaten in 2018. They sh could have been beaten twice in the AL in 2019 before they eventually lost. And 2017, they were without a doubt cheating. So I don't, I don't know what their floor is. I don't know what their ceiling is. I agree with you, Sean. I think their core is very talented. I, I don't think there's any denying that. They've got a great yes. core. But I look at this too. Brian had brought up he likes their rotation because it's Verlander, Greinke, and McCullers, which – on paper is true. Those are three very good arms. But we started to see some wear and tear from, from Greinke in the regular season last year, and we started to see it from Verlander in the playoffs. These guys are old. Greinke and old. Verlander are old. They're in their mid-30s, going into their late 30s soon. I so mean, I'm somehow I'm also suspicious how Verlander was like, you know, he was doing so-so in Detroit, and then he gets to fucking Houston, and he becomes a fucking Cy Young all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I mean – Look, it was lights out last year, Verlander. It was ridiculous. Houston's, it was like 2012, Verlander. You know? If you if you ask Trevor Bauer, who hates the Astros, or anyone else, they'll tell you Houston has a great pitching organization. So it doesn't yeah. shock me that guys like Garrett Cole went there or Verlander went there and they became great. Now, Greinke yeah. didn't, but that was a short sample size, and he's old. So I well, Greinke uh, Greinke pitched well for them though, wasn't he? Eight and one with a three point two. You know, I th he pitched well. Was it that low? I thought no, he was just he, like this. He was up there. It was. I think he had like a bad second half or something. I didn't think he did great in the regular season. He was pretty he big. Was he was pretty big for them in the playoffs, though. Like, and, you know, he yeah. pitched really well in the playoffs, which surprised I, me. I still, I still like Greinke <laughs> because his career is going how we thought it would go. As he's lost velocity, he's gotten more savvy as a pitcher. Yeah, yeah and he's, he's a very pitches. smart. I, I still like Greinke a lot. I think he's very effective he's, still. He's a very smart pitcher for sure. Yeah, uh, and very he has smart the kind man. Of, he has the kind of stuff that, like you said, can translate really well. He could extend his career. Um, but he's still old, and he's not he's not in his prime anymore. Neither is no. Verlander. Those guys could be great. Verlander was a little banged up originally when we were going to start the season. That would have concerned me. But, you know, now everyone's pretty much healthy. Uh, the Astros do have a few guys, some of their younger arms, who are hurt right now. So they don't have as much depth. They're both, their farm system's not as elite as it's been. They made that trade for Greinke last year, which kind of depleted them of any top prospects outside of Whitley and, and Parker uh, or Tucker. And those guys are in the majors now. Um, or Whitley. Whitley's not there yet. He had a really bad 2019, but he's still got the potential. Outside of those top guys, though, we don't know what that farm has to offer necessarily. So the major league product is kind of what it is. Now, I said this about the 2018 Red Sox. It bit me in the ass because all they needed was their major league product to roll through the league. Um, but I don't think the Astros are as good as that Red Sox team. So when I say that I, I think the A's will, will win the division, uh, it's all of those things kind of culminating. They don't have as much depth. They don't have as much form. They, their, their rotation is old, and they lost Garrett Cole. And they lost Garrett Cole to, to their chief competition in the AL, in my opinion. Uh, Greinke, 8-1, 3.02 for the Astros last well, year. All right, that, all right. Uh, I stand corrected. He, he was great for I the thought. Astros. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. 1.06 1, 1. whip. His strikeouts per nine 
fell off to 7.5. Yeah, he, he allowed more contact, but he was still getting out. That's expected yeah. going from the NL to AL, though. I can understand that. You, you deal with the DH. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, Granky was great for them. They, there's yeah, no getting around that. Can Granky he do it again? It's, yeah, any any year now, those guys can, can decline. There's just no getting around it. They're at that age. But Verlander's been at that age. Now he got paid. So, we'll see. Man, any uh, day yeah. now. Any day now, those guys can fall off a cliff. Let's yeah. hope. This is the now, year. I don't think at, the Astros will disappear until after 2021, so I do consider them formidable. It, would it shock me, especially Henry brought up great points. This season couldn't benefit them more. They were in the World Series. They went to Game 7. They don't. They, their pitchers don't need to be used as much because mm-hmm. of the shortened season. They don't have to deal with crowds. They don't have to deal with other pitchers hitting them because that's, you know, that's going to be, that's going to lead to a lot of illegal activity. There's no brawls. No one can stand up to them. So all those things are going for the Astros. They're really going to skate on by, probably not see any wrath. Um, the Astros Mets love and, the coronavirus. Yep. Mets and they Cubs fans are going to bitch and moan in 2021 when this comes back. But I can tell you one thing, and I'm sure you agree, Sean, and I'm sure you agree, Matt, as fans of fan bases who were spurned by the Astros, I'm not letting it go. Never. The second there's fans, I will go. never let it go. The second there's fans allowed back in the stadium and Houston's in that stadium, they they should hear it from Yankees fans and they should hear it from Angels fans and Dodgers fans and and everyone else. So let's all know. let's. I was stoked about opening the season in fucking Houston, but that didn't really happen. We all know why. Yeah. But. <laughs> let's yep. also let's briefly talk about how egregious what they did was. The, you know, we've been watching baseball our whole lives. The whole point of pitching is to fool the batter. Unless you're, you know, Mariano Rivera or a relief pitcher that's going to throw, you know, you know, 20 fastballs or you're Nolan Ryan. The whole point is to trick the batter, and they took that out. We're not tricked. We know what's coming. Like, you know what it okay. is? You know what it is? They fucked over the two most hated teams in baseball, and so fans give them a pass. Yes. That's they true. fucked over That's the Yankees true. and they fucked over the Dodgers and everyone's Although like, oh, I'd, argue, them, I'd argue that the Red Sox yep. are slightly You're more absolutely hated right. than the Dodgers. Absolutely right. Yeah, so I that, think the Red Sox the are issue. slightly more hated than the Dodgers. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, but you know, my point yeah. is they, they screwed yeah, over yeah. two teams that are that, that are, have a fan base that people hate. Yeah, that's love true. To shit on the Yankees, people love to shit on the Dodgers, and because those are the two teams that you know suffered the most from the cheating, fans yeah. are like, oh, okay, let's move on. It's okay. Meanwhile. Yeah. They try to bring up stories about Yankees and steroids in the 90s, which that's been proven false. Yeah. It's very, you know, like, come on. I don't want to hear about steroids. Every team had guys on steroids. Give me a break. And that's the main difference. It's very much an, an enemy of my enemy is a friend situation from the Godfather. Yes. It's a, okay. you know, the, the you're, you're hurting the Yankees and Dodgers. I don't care if you murdered people. That's great. That's that's yeah. how all of these fan bases who don't mm-hmm. win things historically, don't win things now, aren't competing, just want to see other teams who are competing get hurt. That's what you're seeing is they're supporting this. If the roles were reversed, it, you know, if you have if you have the Mets who are in the World Series any of these past three years, if the 2015 World Series happened in 2017 and the Astros were in it. It's a different story. I guarantee yep. it. You're not yep. looking at every line of that report being like, this is the only thing that could have happened. Like, yep. There's way more smoke to that fire. They don't want to acknowledge it, which is fine. And no one, you know, not everyone's going to be perfect, but I completely I, agree with you. I just it remember, was, how, I remember how shocking game five was in Houston. That crazy game, 13-12. Comeback, yeah. and, then I, and then I find out that the Astros did not swing and miss at a Kershaw curveball once in that game. Mm-hmm. And I think, oh, okay, now I know why that game was so strange. Every time they needed a big home run, they hit one. Every time they needed a big hit, they got it, you know? And now it's like, oh, it all makes sense now. Yeah, and they've drill, invited when you drill this... down on it, When you drill down on the games and the situations and you start breaking it down, it's, it's egregious. It's clear, as, it's clear as day, and you're like, fuck, that's really fucked up. Like, I can't yeah. believe it happened, and I can't believe there isn't more backlash. And, you know, Rob Manfred dropped the ball. We spoke about this over and over, but he, he made it worse by the way he handled the punishments and, and you know, everything absolutely. else. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. he absolutely made it worse. He did not handle it the way he should have done. Manfred's terrible. He's got to be the worst in sports right now. Oh, it's, it's bad. We He's worse than Goodell. Horrible. We have had oh, several his, episodes his, about Rob Manfred's yeah. credibility as the worst his, commissioner. His defense <laughs> was it's a piece of metal, which is like, oh, my God. Come on, like, yeah. man. So dense. It's, it's, you know a curve. Really, if you know a curveball is coming, you can just sit back on that curveball and just wait. You know. Of well, and, what, and what cracks me up, Sean, to to the points you've been making is that 
the common fan can't seem to differentiate what the Astros were doing, what other teams may have been doing. We don't have proof outside of the Red Sox that it actually was happening. But, like, the Yankees will use for an example because, I don't know, Henry, what's it been, five or six times now they've been accused in 2014, 2015 of cheating? Um, And it it automatically – Gets pulled what, in with what was the, the accusation? They, they they messed with the bullpen phone? That, yeah, that, right. like that? they, they yeah. asked from a bullpen phone if a pitch was a strike or not. And somehow that is the same thing in some fans' eyes as knowing the pitches, decoding the signs against the other team's knowledge, yeah. and then developing a live relay system to know what the pitch is when they're in the batter's box before it comes. Yep. Like this oh. is – somehow that's the same thing. And by the way, it wasn't illegal when the Yankees were doing it, but I get the yeah. ethics. I get the ethics behind it. It was still immoral. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's unbelievable that people can't differentiate the difference uh, between what the Astros did and only the Astros did until there's other yes. solid proof and an investigation solid by proof. MLB. It is only what the Astros did. Until that happens with another team, it's not the steroid era. Like that is yeah, like, I, that is a crazy I, comparison to me. Crazy. I think what the Astros did is exponentially worse than any steroid, any I, steroid. I agree. Question, accusation, because the only thing that people are butthurt about the steroids is, oh, the record books are a little skewed now. Yeah, but, you know, teams weren't winning the World Series because they knew what pitch was coming when right. they were on steroids. You still had to hit the ball. You still had to guess right. You know, and plus it was a level playing field. Everyone was on steroids. So there's yeah, no I, advantage I, agree. I didn't think there was an advantage there. I agree. The steroids thing is, is it was widely used. You know, some players weren't using, but some, most of them were. It was yeah. kind of like, let's look the other way. But Selig knew what was going on and brought the game back. It, this one is different because you, you're cheating your peers directly to their face. You know, you, you're cheating your opposition. You're not playing on a level playing field. Like, they play just as hard as you, and you're just taking it away from them by just grossly cheating. Yeah, you're messing with the integrity of the of the competitiveness oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the game itself, of the actual yeah. you know, the balls and the strikes. I agree. Yeah, and and to say, and we saw this a lot early on, to say that not knowing what pitch is coming is not an advantage because you still have to hit the ball is That's maybe the dumbest bullshit. thing. Oh, maybe the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. If you're a baseball fan, yeah. Yes. If, if you're if you're if you're guessing if you're guessing fastball and a curveball comes, yeah, you're going like, to be off. I mean, changing speeds and the and the trajectory of the pitches is the entire sport. <laughs> it, it, the it's entire the whole sport revolves around it. The whole yeah. point of pitching is to fool the batter, <laughs> trick the batter. That's the difference between guys that make the pros and guys that don't. Being able to hit that breaking ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everyone can hit a fastball going back to high school. Yeah. You put anybody, you put the, the, the worst player, the biggest scrub in, in the batting cage, and he can hit a fastball. Yeah, he can't hit a breaking ball. It's Just like, you know, Pedro Serrano. He can cross the fastball. There you go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's that second and third pitch. The second pitch makes you a good reliever. The third pitch makes you a good starter. And there's a reason that you need more than one pitch, unless you're Mariano Rivera, who, by the way, also had a fastball that no one talks about. Yeah. Um, a lot, and of, that's it. a lot of relievers have one pitch. You know? Right. A lot of yeah. relievers closes. Because of sample size, two. yeah, for sure. So, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't – I think the big thing is Houston is the mystery box of 2020. There's a lot of variables in their favor. There's a lot of variables from years past that are not in their favor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But if you break down the team, they always seem to have a good bullpen. As mm-hmm. James pointed out in the comment section I mentioned earlier, they're a great pitching organization. They're way mm-hmm. – they were way ahead of the curve on pitching – uh, analytics and future and technology and whatnot. Now teams yeah. like the Indians, Yankees, Dodgers are starting to catch up, but they had that, they were ahead of that curve and it was right around that 2017 time. So they yeah, have that a, going for them. In a vacuum, taking away all the hatred and the cheating, Astros are still a very talented team and very yeah. dangerous still. So and I you, they do have right some out. questions because you have like Correa coming off of injury. You have Yuli, who's another year old. You know, they do have some quick, can Gonzalez like, repeat the same breakout season he had. You know, there's a lot of question mark there, but yep. that, that team is talented for sure. Back of the rotation. It's going to be a string of guys who haven't done it, uh, but have huge upsides. So you just don't know. I, I'm waiting for Josh James. Josh James throws 101. I'm yep. waiting for yep. him to, to put it together as a pitcher. Alan um, made a comment in the 
in the section. He said, make Joe Torre the commissioner. I think baseball fans would jump out of a window if Joe Torre was commissioner <laughs> just because of his links to the Yankees. Oh, the conspiracies. Yeah, just like yeah. when Stanton was traded to the Yankees and the world ended. Yeah, yeah. Derek, <laughs> Derek Jeter did, did us a favor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Derek, yeah, Derek knew what he was doing, as always. So, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Houston can go either way. I, I do think there's way too much core talent there and way too too many smarts in the organization for them to be a total non-factor like they may have been in 162 just based on the outside factors. Uh, they'll be a playoff contender, and we'll, we'll see exactly how formidable. Wouldn't shock me if they went to the World Series. Wouldn't shock me if they were a wild card and lost wild card night. <laughs> so, we'll see. Leaves us with our final team of the night. This is Sean's moment. Uh, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, the Dodgers, I think, mean something to everyone here in a different way. But we can start with you, Sean. Does the schedule, first of all, mean anything to you? And second of all, what are your thoughts on the Dodgers? Well, obviously, they're stacked from top to bottom. Um, I think they have a few advantages this year that we talked about, which is the DH is a huge advantage for them. Um, I think depth is going to be important in a short season. I feel like, you know, if a key guy goes down for your team in a short season, that could ruin a team season. You know, you lose a guy for 20 games, that might cost you the playoffs. The Dodgers have tons of depth. They could afford a couple injuries. Um, the schedule, I guess, I, I read that it was the ninth easiest, according to, you know, their opponents, but it's also <laughs> – one. It's also the, one of the most highly, the most traveled they have to do. An easy schedule. Yeah, yeah, they have an easy schedule, and uh, I thought, like I said, I think the only thing working against them is the sixty games is a is a wild card. We don't know. I mean, if they start out slow, you know, they yeah. can get in a hole. But other than that, I mean, top to bottom, I mean, what do you want to talk about? The lineup, the bullpen, what do you, the prospects? We can. We can <laughs> Who do you think? Here. Who do you think is going to be? Is it a rotating DH for you, or is there someone specific you're seeing there most of the time? Well, I think you're going to have Betts and Bellinger in the outfield, and you're going to rotate Peterson and Pollock, uh, you know, in left field and DH. But you also have guys you could throw in there on a on a day. You still have Kike Hernandez. You still have Chris Taylor. You still have Matt Beatty. And watch out for Edwin Rios. This guy's been crushing the ball too. So you have yeah. forget about Lux. Yeah. You have, well, yeah. If Lux starts at second, or if he does, or if Hernandez starts, you, you got a guy that's you know, a solid major leaguer in your DH spot. I think that's a huge advantage. Now, I've been lobbying for the DH in the NL for a long time. Same not, here. Not, smart. Not smart. Only, yeah, yeah, not only because We're unanimous it helps there. the Dodgers, but because it's the way that it's going to go. You may as well just get there. We know it's going to be a DH world eventually. You may as well. I think that's why they're doing it this year. They're basically – it's like a fucking – it's like a trial period, and if it works out, they're just going to universally do it. Yeah, I mean, I think every baseball league in the world, except for one in Korea, uses the DH. All the minor leagues, high school, yeah. everywhere mm -hmm. is DH. The National League is the only place where they didn't have it. So, I mean, you may as well just keep it for good after this year, I think. John, I don't see a single even week on the schedule that's difficult. No, <laughs> no there isn't. <laughs> there, the like, there's a series here and there. Obviously, Houston sticks out. Uh, I mean, even to start the year, they're home. So, like, you know, maybe the Diamondbacks and Angels could be a little difficult. I don't know why they play the Angels for one game. That's weird. Yeah, well, the Angels, it's, 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 we always we, – we, like, it's, like, tradition to play the Dodgers every year. It just yeah. happens. Uh, the just Angels for a game? Playing pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, even, like, two games. Sometimes okay. it's just two games or one game. It just – it always happens every year. Isn't, yeah. it, isn't it called something? Yeah, we call it the Freeway Series. No, that game. Isn't there one game that's called something – yeah, the freeway you know, series. Those are, those are exhibitions, that's why. Yeah. yeah. I, also I know like we always play the Dodgers right before we start an actual season. Yeah, we yeah, always play those exhibition games. But, yeah, <laughs> our, that one series, it's usually, it's usually what happens. It's no, no, no. What Vince was talking about, there's a single game on the 21st, which is tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. That, that's a fake <laughs> which game. Which is an so exhibition game. Oh, yeah, that's an exhibition game on my birthday. So, yeah, you start home with the Giants, and then you've got only two for Houston, and then it's, you know, Arizona, San Diego, home for San Francisco. I mean, there is not a single week on this schedule where I'd be like, that's a tough stretch. Yeah, I mean, the schedule's in their favor, you know. Everything is in their favor. I feel like it's an easy it's an easy walk to the playoffs, at least. And then you got to uh, – only the Braves really scare me in, in the rest yeah. of the 
the league. Yeah. I mean, the Nationals have taken a hit. Um, the Cardinals are okay, but who else besides the Braves is going to get in the way of the Dodgers? I don't. I can't really. I'm not really scared of any team other than the Braves. I don't see it happening. If you don't have to play the Braves in the first round, you're not going to play them, so you don't have to worry yeah. about them. <laughs> so really, they're never they're never getting out of the first round. I like what they're doing with Bueller too. They're going to make Dustin May piggyback on Bueller. That's the plan because they're going to build him up. I guess they're going to pitch Bueller 50, 60 pitches, have May come in, pitch a couple innings. And Dustin May, who I just like to say that I love. I love everything yeah. about Dustin May. Other than the fact that he has the best hair in the major leagues, that we know. Um, you look at his short sample size last year, Dustin May, 34 and two-thirds innings. He pitched to a 3.6 ERA, 1.06 whip. And you could say that's a short sample size. But when I look at his minor league stats, 403 innings, almost the exact same stats. You know, he was a one, you know, seven, seven hits per innings, you know, almost nine strikeouts per nine. Um, I love Dustin May. I think he's going to be the key player for the Dodgers this year. They lost Price. I think you can slot, you can slot in May, and he might even be better than Price was. We don't know how much David Price had left. So I really oh, love I Dustin forgot May. Price opted out. Yeah, yeah Price was, opted out. I was going to say, Dustin May was a big-time prospect. So the yeah, fact he, he's him. good in the majors, not surprising. You've got some other interesting guys. Uh, you traded for Gratterall, right? Oh, well, that was the big bonus of that trade getting held up, that they wound up with Gratterall, and all they gave up was Jeter Downs, who they yeah. don't really need because they have enough bats. Gratterall, this guy tops out at 102. You know, he's had some injuries, yeah. but, you know, bullpen has always been the one question for the Dodgers in this run. You know, how is their middle relief going to hold up? With this guy, Gratterall, I mean, I'll give you a hot take. He might be the closer by the end of the year. Wow. That is a hot and he take. Will, I like he that. Will be the, he will be the closer next year. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll say that. I can it's, see him ousting Jansen for sure. It's Jan interesting. Jansen, Jansen is the one weak link. He's the one part of the Dodgers that worries me. It's interesting to me that Bueller's going to be part of a piggyback. What about Julio Urias? Is he um, is he like all, yeah, gates open or is he yeah. is he going to be a starter? Yeah, he's slotted he's in, in as one of the starters. Right now, you know, it's – Kershaw, Bueller, Stripling, Urias, and Wood. Um, what are your guess, thoughts you know, on Gaslin? What's that? Gaslin or whatever his name is. Gonzalez. Yeah, oh, Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, they, I like him too, but they optioned him down. But uh, I think you'll see him at some point. He's not. Yeah. He didn't make the club, but I think you'll see him at one point. He's got some good stuff, Gonzalez. Uh, so yeah, lo I, losing that, Price wasn't losing Price is not as big of a deal for them when you have a May, you have a Gonzalez, and you have a deep staff. But uh, Urias, I think he's finally over that injury, and we have to be super careful with stage. I think they're finally going to let him go this year. And he pitched great last year, you know, in, in short spots. Yeah, he's always for... been the big prospect, you know. He was the guy before Bueller. That was yeah, I be mean, he was, he was supposed to be like a generational arm when he was a prospect, though. He yes. was a big-time praise. Um, yeah. Henry, the, the Dodgers are probably the only team in the majors who can tell – the same depth the Yankees have that's major league proven. Um, I, I, I actually think they have more major league proven depth than the Yankees. I think the Dodgers are the cream of the crop. That was my question is, <laughs> do, do are the Dodgers the deepest team? Yeah, in I the agree majors? with that. I, I think so. I mean, I look at oh, this without team a doubt. And I see two potential holes. That's maybe at third base, but they're so deep that they can plug a Matt, Max Muncy at third base. They can plug other players at third base. Yeah, they can plug KK Hernandez at third base if Justin Turner doesn't do his thing, and like he said, you know Kenley Jensen, he's a question mark. He's your closer. I I hope Dave Roberts isn't like, you know, uh, married to Jensen. Yeah, if he was yeah, smart yeah, enough yeah. to do bullpen by committee, oh, this is the best matchup for this day. Like I'm going with whatever because that bullpen is sneakily deep, and they got played. Man, I felt like we've talked about them with Rookie of the Year for the last four five years they had a player in content they're like the Yankees the Yankees had Glaber Sanchez I feel like the Dodgers have had somebody in contention for rookie of the year every year for the last four or five years yeah, yeah. and this year it's this year it's Lux so it's an embarrassment of riches yeah. when David it Price is. can opt out and it's an afterthought because David Price could still be pretty damn good he may yeah. not be you know what he was in Tampa Bay but he still you know can contribute he, he looked well the second half of last year he well, could have been a weapon I mean, going going, I, going to that stadium, you know, going from Fenway to, to Dodger Stadium is, is an automatic advantage, DH or not. 
I expect um, them to just bludgeon their way to an NL title again and be in the World Series. What, there's two things that scare me, and Sean touched on it earlier in the podcast. For the last three years, they've stumbled out of the gate, and you can't do that this year. And I look at that schedule, and I think it was San Diego. Um, San Francisco. San Francisco for four, then San Diego, and then someone else. And so I can see maybe they stumble. But if they don't stumble out the gate, they're going to run away with this shit. I, I think they have the mindset of we can't stumble. And I think they're focused. And I think, you know, you, you, got, a bunch of game, you got a bunch of gamers on that team who aren't going to get lazy. You know, you got veterans like Turner. I feel like Muncie is one of the more underrated stories in the last two years. The guy's – He's the also, guys on base. The guys on base percentage is three eighty over the last two years. I think he's got seventy yeah. home runs, and nobody and really talks about him that much. But. You got a guy like Jock Peterson, who's really their fourth outfielder, who would be a starter on most teams. Yeah, and when he's facing a right-hander, you're talking about a, you know a weapon. Yeah, he can't have, hit lefties. He's never yeah. been able to hit lefties. But if you can just platoon him and play him against righties, he's another. You know, he's a masher. We will see Gavin Lux this year. It's a matter of how soon they're waiting nine days. You know, they'll play the game. Yeah, we yeah. will see guy. The kid is too talented and too damn good to hold down. Too good. You know, and uh, you can always use KK Hernandez at second. You can use Taylor at second. You can use Muncie at second. You have they got Mookie, a lot of bets on a, Mookie bets on a free agent year. There's just too many things. Yeah. To go. I feel like that. Betts is the reason that Betts is the one that puts him at the top of this. Yeah. You slide you know, him in there, and the depth this, just becomes one more slot. This is what know. scares me with the Dodgers. At some point, you keep making the World Series, you have to win one. Yes. yes. You can't be the Buffalo Bills of the MLB. You got to no. win one. You, <laughs> yeah, can't this, this... Get, you can't keep getting there and not win one. So I think if they keep doing that and not win one, that, that'll be a big, big stain on the organization. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's already painful. Well, I mean, it's, this is getting to be almost a Braves-like run when yeah. they won all those divisions in a row. I think they won 14 in a row. I see no reason why the Dodgers can't win the division for the next two, three years. I'm going so to you're ask, talking Sean, 10, I'm going to ask you, do you have any crow in your house? Any what? Any crow. Do you have any crow? Crow? Yeah, I want you to eat crow because I, for years you've shitted on Friedman <laughs> as a GM. <laughs> I, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a specific thing with him. I mean, they, were, they were in position to win a World Series a couple of times, and he held back, and he was too safe. They could have got Andrew Miller. They could have signed Max Scherzer. Instead, let's get Brandon McCarthy. Let's get Scott Kazmier. You know, let's get Brett Anderson. These guys were garbage. Yeah. You, you know, he did spend $80 million on Anderson, Kazmier, and McCarthy. He made so, up for it, I think. He did make up for it. I can't complain about Friedman yeah. anymore. So, but no, but like, I'm, I'm off that. I'm off that. This is, this is the cream of the crop to me. I think this yeah. team is too deep, and I, they still have, you know, uh, bullets in the chamber, you know, for the future. That The team is loaded, man. Well, they got – they, they, they're committed to Will Smith as their catcher, and two of their best prospects are catchers. Yep. Um, Ruiz, Calvert Ruiz, is a big prospect. And uh, who's the other guy? Oh, Diego Cataya. He was the number one international prospect in well, 2018. I think, I He's think a big that's, pro- catcher, too. I think that's the big divide in my mind. When you look at a, the other juggernauts, and it, you know, well, again, we'll look at the Yankees and, and compare it to the Dodgers. The Yankees, it, can their 26-man roster be as good as a Dodger? Sure. Yeah. Can their bench be as good as a Dodger? Sure. But then yes. you start looking at the organization as a whole. And what blows my mind about the Dodgers is that year in and year out, not only do they have rookies who come up who perform like Chris Taylor did, like Max Monks- Muncy did, like Lux probably will this year, but they still have like an elite farm system. Mm-hmm. It's, yes. just, it's, it's a total pipeline. They're like a less feminine version of the Cardinals in that they they produce like true men into that organization every single year who just become major, major candidates to win all sorts of awards. The Cardinals are a fantastic organization at it, but they're not as good as the Dodgers are in my mind. Um, and they specialize in, in pitching, not, not both. Like the Dodgers yes. get great pitching and they get great hitting every single year without fail. And they still have a good farm system. And that's what separates it. Like the Yankees have an, an, an average farm system. It's not bad. And they've got some pieces like Clark Schmidt who are waiting, but it's not the Dodgers. No one is but the one, Dodgers right now. Yeah. One of the big sea changes with the Dodgers, with Friedman and the old regime was that the old regime didn't spend any money on the international pool. And now it's the polar opposite. Now they're mm-hmm. all over the international pool. You know, that's you got the, that's the one area Cashman had an advantage over play over other GMs. 
Yes. Yeah. He he ran through the Dominican Republic and yeah. uh, and and those other the, yes. you know the other countries like that. It ran through it before other teams were doing it, uh, and still is. Uh, we just basically throw a bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks. Like every two years or whenever we can get pool money. Um, but how has, the Dodgers Friedman. are doing stuff like yeah. that. Friedman has also made a couple trades that you don't think about much at the time, and now you look back. How great was the Puig Alex Wood? Salary dump. Mm-hmm. They got Jeter Downs out of that, who was in the bets trade. You get Gratterall for Downs. And they also have Josiah Gray, who's probably their number one prospect right now. Fireballing, you know, potential two or three starter. I mean, you got that. And he's got Alex Wood back. I mean, <laughs> so basically for Puig, you got two big prospects and you indirectly got Mookie Betts. Friedman makes a lot of clever moves like that. That's why, you know, I've definitely come around on him, turned around. You know, I'm all good with Andrew Friedman now. Me and him are... Him there, you guys are tight now. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you're looking at this, you know, they're the other team in the city. You, you, it shouldn't be a rivalry. We've discussed that. But, I mean, what do you think about the Dodgers? Is this, is this tough as an Angels fan, or are you just, like, win one and then talk? Well, I don't, I don't really care about winning one. If they want to win one, go ahead. Win one. I'm not going to get mad. But, dude, I'm <laughs> jealous just of their fucking – their development system and all of that. I wish we had that as an Angels team. Like, they're so yeah, good yeah. at developing players and so good at drafting. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, there's no oh, end in sight. I mean, getting when international have- prospects, too. It's just like they're fucking they're, – they're the A – they're, yeah, they're, they're on their A game. That's for fucking sure. Yeah, like, it, there's no end in sight. When when are they going to have a rebuild? It seems like they don't need a rebuild. They don't need one if you keep going. No, because they get yeah. going and they keep getting better. There's no rebuild in sight for the Dodgers. So, you, know how people say, you know how people say we hate big market teams? Because big market teams who are smart, this is how they spend their money. Right? No, yeah. Exactly. Oh, and they find exactly young right. talent to eventually replace dying talent instead of signing them to stupid deals. You pick and choose where to spend your money, and then you yeah. keep turning out yeah. talent, and that's what the Dodgers do. It's, very it's well. a great point. Nobody hates the Giants and Cubs right now, or the Tigers. <laughs> yeah. Those are big spenders. No, the hatred is towards the Dodgers, towards the Yankees, because they're spending, and they also develop talent, which is the part that gets overlooked when you're a Pirates fan and you're super upset because Bob Nutting's your owner. You don't look at the fact that the Yankees and Dodgers, mainly the Dodgers here. Dodgers, to me, are the, are the top right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Top We're organization top. in the entire game. They have every single part of that organization running correctly and efficiently and effectively. And I'll also point out, Matt, you were in Florida, and it is still not dark out at 8.42. Nope, not at all. <laughs> it's yeah. not, but it's hot as balls. Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am indoors in air well, conditioning. So really, I need to pee really bad, too, so I'm like, hold yeah. that in. <laughs> well, on that note, let's uh, – yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what everyone said is, is pretty accurate. I mean, the, the Dodgers have 45 win potential in my mind if everything's yeah, right for them. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see what they are. We have many things to note. One of which is I have worn something that is festive to each show that we've had so far. This one belongs to the Dodgers. It is my Vin Scully nice. microphone shirt. Nice. Nice. Says Vin, and it's a microphone. Fits me very well. Um, Vin Scully, the goat. The goat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No disagreements. And no Brooklyn, disagreements. Brooklyn native, of course. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that, that's that. Last week was the Indians. Before that was Garrett Cole. So, other things to note. Um, first of all, thank you, Matt and Sean, for joining us. You guys were absolutely wonderful. Matt, a lot of fun. Glad, yeah, glad to have you guys. Sean, it was great to – you're like a rock that we finally uncovered. Uh, <laughs> yeah, finally uh, got Sean, to Sean the has shit been with you. Sean is one of our, like, day one dudes, man. He's been with us since day one. He's in every yeah. group. He's a big yeah. participant in every group. And when he's I like the fan of the opera. He, like, comes out and murders someone every once in a while. And then <laughs> when we just don't hear I said, I hope huh? he doesn't say no. He said, ah, I'm not too crazy with Zoom. I said, download Zoom and let's get a test run. And that was that. <laughs> yeah. was I'm, in so many, I'm in so many groups. But I will say, this is, you know, the life groups are at the top. That's the cream of the crop. Thank you, Because, brother. you know, you don't get Glad any BS in there. And then when you do get some BS, it gets taken care of quickly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really yeah. the top of the crop. It's That's a pleasure. Crazy. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate, Thank you. It. Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. That's where the three of us come in when it when when Pete, when things need to get handled. Um, <laughs> yes. Matt, happy thirtieth birthday tomorrow. I know that it's a big Thank day you. for you. Yep. Happy you're, birthday, bro. 
there thank you on your unlimited <laughs> okay. vacation so we're, we're glad you're happy and and uh safe 30, and, 30. And healthy yep. 30 30 um, my ass it's all downhill from <laughs> it's all like, downhill fuck. from here matt <laughs> it's all downhill from here matt it's all downhill I'm fucking 30 <laughs> and uh thank you again to eddie morales for the if you missed it earlier our, our otani book he <laughs> yes thank you eddie. jay paris the author uh we are excited to to be able to get to read that henry and i um we have a special edition tomorrow of the audible 7 p.m if you are not in football life and you like football feel free to join it that's going to be randy hammond and matt bushnell will be on um so that's 7 p.m tomorrow eastern time a special edition of dong city thursday 6 p.m eastern time so come right back with us that's opening day where there's guaranteed to be baseball nothing could possibly stop it from happening uh, we are going to be on for about an hour right before that, leading into first pitch Nationals Yankees. So that is our next show Thursday. And then, of course, we will be back Monday with our regular 7 p.m. time slot. So thank you guys again for joining. This has been the Western Division preview. We're going to make our playoff predictions and award predictions, Henry and I, next or uh, on Thursday, Thursday, right before opening day. So join us then. This has been Dong City. Everyone have a great night. Thanks for having me, guys. Later.